I'm Zach Whitman. Um, thank you, guys. Hey, I know too many people in this audience. <clears throat> um, I'm here to talk about vector tiles and how we are planning to use them, how we are using them at Census today, and how we foresee them actually playing a really critical part in our dissemination strategy as well as our collection strategy going forward. Um, that's not the green button you meant. That's the laser pointer. Um, so three things. Uh, I want to talk about a problem set that we're currently dealing with, the two problem sets that I think are really good examples for what we are trying to solve here. Um, why vector tiles were the appropriate fix for this, and then what are we going to be planning next? So in terms of the problem sets, we have, as you may be made aware, we have a 2020 census coming up. Uh, it's kind of important. And so we need to get it right. Uh, critical this year that we do not have an undercount. And so one of the things that we are working on is making sure that uh, the first digital census also has very strong enumeration uh, going on. And we are out into the field working on making sure that the spaces that, are, uh, that need to be hard or that are harder to count are counted. And so we have a lot of field representatives that will be doing enumeration and canvassing. Um, what that means is that we have a lot of people in the field with devices that need to be able to have a map on them. We need to be able to send people to a list of addresses and say, hey, you need to go here, here, and here in this order, and you need to make sure that you report back on what you found at those specific locations. Uh, we need to have navigation offline because a lot of these areas that are especially hard to count don't have the best cell coverage or may not have the most reliable coverage. And so fetching a lot of imagery to serve as a base map might not be the best solution. And then thirdly, we need to make sure that we keep our costs down. As we move into more of these technical solutions, a big assumption across the government is that we're incorporating some sort of cost savings. So to realize that, we need to make sure that we are judicious with what we end up pulling from the, uh, you know, the data plans and make sure that we keep those numbers low. Uh, the other half of it is data going out the door. So after we've collected it, we have a responsibility as mandated in the Constitution to disseminate these data. Uh, right now, our current holdings are somewhere in the range of 1.2 trillion unique estimates. That's over 30 vintages of 60 plus summary levels across 100 different surveys. We don't just do the decennial census. We have a number of different uh, products that we need to make sure are well supported. Um, we also understand that we have a ton of different ways that people collect data or pull data from us. We have a number of different outlets. A lot of folks might be familiar with American Fact Finder or our API, uh, Census Business Builder. We have a whole host of these applications, but they're all kind of federated systems. They live in different places. Some may have a mapping application, some may not. And that ultimately is a frustrating user experience because if you learn how to use one system, you would think that you would be able to translate those experiences and skills to the other system. Oh yeah, I need to get some census data and I want to get some econ data. Why should that be any different than getting some demographic data? Ultimately, we see the vision as being a one solution approach where you can simply just learn a skill, know and expect that the data will have a map associated with it. Um, we also need to decrease our time to market. A lot of times when we're trying to represent thematic data on a map, it requires server-side rendering and processing. That's something that we cannot scale to. That's something that would require a tremendous amount of computing power to scale if we were going to support every single estimate that we currently have in our holdings. And lastly, lastly we want to make it things accessible. Critically important that a mapping application can be accessible to anybody, regardless of the disability, visual impairment, or uh, physical dexterity limitations. We want to make sure that our data can be in the hands of anybody and everybody, not just uh, those who, who are sighted or are enabled. Um, and so we saw vector tiles as a really great solution to a, a number of these problems. Um, so for those who aren't super technical on the details for vector tiles, effectively what we're doing is we're shipping the physical geometry, the vectors, from the client down, or from the server down to the client instead of representing, it, representing base maps as like an image. Um, so this is an example I pulled from MapZen. May they rest in peace. Um, but it's, it's a perfect example, because really what it's showing you is that for what you use as a typical base map, we can encode a lot of that data right into the service itself, which means that effectively you can interrogate that. You can say, what is that gray polygon? What is it used for? How high is it? You can associate any type of data that you want to those shapes. 
and then customize it to the user's requirements. Um, it is very small, so there is some, it, the approach to minimize all of that coordinate data allows us to deliver all a, a vast amount of data uh, with relatively little data transaction over the wire. You can style them as in any way that you want because you have access to the underlying data. So if you want to say that this, this gray polygon should be blue, you can do that all on client, no server side transaction required. Again, cutting down on a lot of transmission costs. And lastly, it's open sourced. Uh, we, so this is a big part of it as well. Um, the standard is open and it allows us to extend it. So the first thing is our enumeration prototype app. All this is doing is it's a proof of concept that allowed us to demonstrate the capability that if we were to take an entire US base map and put it on every device, we would no longer need any kind of network connection or network, or, uh, network support to see where the user is and navigate to where they need to be. We could transact all that data in the morning or onload all the, uh, the base map content before they, it is even in the hands of the enumerator and they could be off and running right away. We could transfer the, the uh, applications as much as we need to and we still have all the content locally. Uh, and it is a dramatically improved user experience based on how uh, the user uh, behaves with the map, far more like the commercial products that they may be using anyway on a day-to-day -day basis to navigate around a city or a uh, rural area. This approach allowed us to now start to actually bake in all of these vector tiles and we're putting it into practice for 2020. The second one is on the uh, dissemination piece. We now are approaching a point where since we can style every single geography in a different way, we can use vector tiles and just pull data from the API and never have to re-transact any geometry or any imagery files. We fetch the data once for the user and then we style it based on the variable that they're interested in. This is a first cut, these are early days, but what it, this is proving out is that this thing can scale. So all we need to do is produce a ton of vector layers supporting all the different geom or the uh, variables that we're after, and then we would just need to hook that up to our application. Um, right here, this is an example of where we use it as a reference map. We can use them thematically, we can use them as reference maps, we can use them as embeddable widgets for third parties. We know that a lot of our customers like to take our data and put it on their own website. Uh, Congress is a great consumer of this. They want to know who lives in their congressional district, so we provide that ability to have an interactive map experience that they can lift without any coding required. They just need to drop it into uh, their site as an iframe. So that's cool, that's where we are today. Uh, those are prototypes um, and alpha releases right now. Um, immediately we are releasing a new version of our new data dissemination platform called data.census.gov in like three days. Uh, brand new code base, it'll look different than what you just saw, um, but effectively it leans into this ability to, to join tabular data with vector data on the fly. Um, I'd encourage you to check it out and give us your feedback because we are soliciting comments and making sure that we can make this application as good as possible before we just bake something and send it out to the world. We want to work collaboratively and iteratively. Uh, second would be that uh, every single data product that we now release as a, uh, from, the, from the platform will have dynamic capabilities automatically baked in. That's a principle that we're going forward with and vector tiles are allowing us to do that. Um, we will have a fully accessible map, WCAG 2.0 AA by 2020. This is a key milestone and mission of ours. We need to make sure that our map can be easily accessed by anybody. And lastly, an improved API and developer resources section. This allows you to pick up the code. We are going to open source this entire platform and allow folks to pick up that code and customize it to their wishes because we, we only can solve for the basic core ideas but we think that we, if we can put these services in your hands today, you'll do a lot more with them. And so we want to enable as much of that as possible. Um, we want to move forward thinking in what we can do to enable others, not ourselves. Our application is simply just a proof out. So we want you guys to take a look at our data, see how you can work with it, build new things, build better things that we can, because we only can do so much. 
if we can democratize our data, if we can make folks look and work with our data without having to know every little detail about how census works, we'll be a lot better for it. And um, we hope you'll join us. Thank you.